Safe spaces of release, holding space. Welcome to Wednesday Insights. No one can hold my process. Friends are distancing themselves from me. She's my partner. Isn't she supposed to hold my process? I hold hers too. I'm constantly reminded of our humanity and the importance of meeting each other right in the middle of it. Each of us journey in a full spectrum. There will be sunny days and there will be rainy days as well. It is not always pretty. As I shared with you in the 21 day challenge on day 13, it took me a long time to allow myself to be seen to stand naked in the imperfections and that it's actually okay to allow some space for what is felt in that moment. To give space for the seasons of my journey. The question is, how do I safely release? Am I conscious in the moment of the release, meaning I'm able to host it? Or am I actually just vomiting all over the place, having an unconscious release? And what about those we share the release with, unconsciously or consciously? They don't always know what to do with it. They don't always have the space to hold both their own process and ours as well. If we look at it objectively, it is also a huge ask. Let me share with you a few case studies. A client slipped into a pitch dark hole during the pandemic. He allowed himself to be seen in this space. He shared his pain and his darkness with his partner for the first time in their fairly new relationship. However, his partner could not meet him there. It triggered deep stuff within both of them and it caused many hurtful exchanges. He, my client, had been in a depth coaching process for quite a few years. He knew the importance of it. Depth work, however, was new to his partner. When my client phoned me, I held space for his sharing, his pain, his frustration and his longing to just be held. The emotional release often relates to old knowledge, past experience, old wounds. In the responsible individual depth coaching journey, we practice to see it, we acknowledge it, we host it. Once we have given it a name, we begin to separate ourselves from it, remembering that actually we are not that feeling. Once we get into this practice, immersing ourselves in it, practicing the art of holding both the dark and the light, the deep unconscious and the conscious, we begin to reflect on how fair it is to ask someone else to be the place we dump our stuff, our unresolved energy, especially if the other is in an unresolved place themselves. Yes, it would be wonderful if our partners and our loved ones could meet us there. Well, I guess it depends on how much space we require to vomit. It depends on how reactive we are. Again, I'm brought back to the thought, isn't that a huge ask? How much is too much? Reactive energy is very heavy. Can we maybe learn to practice release more consciously and find safe spaces for the release? Personally, I've done my fair share of spilling over the years. You can ask my kids, they know the full spectrum. They have helped me heal my angry one. They are one of the big reasons that I practice to not unconsciously spill. 
as I'm also human, I am tested and I do stumble. However, I have promised myself to become more and more awake to the inner noise, the hijackings, and to catch myself and press pause while breathing and resetting. If you could hear my thoughts, you would hear me counting slowly to 10 and telling myself to not do or say anything stupid. The observer is a great buddy on my journey and helps me to not jump too quickly to a response I might just regret. And if I remain stuck, I find a place of safe release. Exercise is hugely helpful for me. And sometimes I also ask my beautiful conscious partner if I may please kick the walls for a moment and bring out my five-year-old. I ask him if he can just hold the space for me just for a moment. Notice the ownership. In a space of ownership, we open ourselves to new angles. We're mindful that our spillage doesn't impact others negatively as it has absolutely nothing to do with them. Here is another little story. It is about my gran. She's 91. When I moved to South Africa end of 2006, more than 13 years ago, she got herself a computer so we could stay in close contact. She's an amazing woman, sharp as a knife, and with lots of fire inside of her. Together we practice safe spaces of release. Normally I have lots of space and capacity to hold space for her process. A phone call will typically start like this, if this is where we go first. Karina, how many bins do you have for me today? Mostly I respond, at least 10 gran. I'm ready for the garbage, go for it. After giving her the opportunity to clear the space, we can focus on having a conscious conversation that elevates us both and leaves us energized for the day. It is such a lovely practice to share with her, one that also brings us a lot of joy and laughter. It is so important to add humor to the process. Humor helps us to look at the release from the outside in instead of being completely captured and hijacked by it. There has been a couple of times over the years where I did not have the bandwidth in that moment to hold the space for her, as I was in the middle of my own process and release. In such a scenario, I would let her know and come back to her once I felt more resolved. In summary, it is a healthy process to release and it is so important that we learn to stand naked in our experience, to really feel it. This is where the healing begins. The big difference is consciousness, to create those safe spaces of release and to become an active role player in moving from the detail of what we are caught in to a much bigger picture changing the story we're telling ourselves about ourselves and about others, opening ourselves to many more angles and to tell our knowing there's more. It is so easy to be the noise and to add to it when meeting others in it. However, we do have a choice. I'm not the negative one. I'm not the noisy one. I'm not the angry one and so on. Yes, allow the release when it surfaces. In a safe space, give it some airtime, but don't live there. Once you choose to live a conscious life and become more conscious in how you release unresolved energy, you begin to open up to an inner calm and peace right at your center. That's who you really are.